The Paramara dynasty was an Indian dynasty that ruled Malwa and surrounding areas in west-central India between 9th and 14th centuries. The medieval Bardic literature classifies them among the Agnavanshi Rajput dynasties. The dynasty was established in either 9th or 10th century. The earliest extant Paramara inscriptions, issued by the 10th century ruler Siyaka, have been found in Gujarat and suggest that he was a vassal of the Rashtrakutas of Manyaheta. Around 972 CE, Siyaka sacked the Rashtrakuta capital Manyaheta, and established the Paramaras as a sovereign power. By the time of his successor Munja, the Malwa region in present-day Madhya Pradesh had become the core Paramara territory, with Dara now Dar as their capital. The dynasty reached its zenith under Munja's nephew Boja, whose kingdom extended from Chittor in the north to Konkan in the south, and from the Sabarmati River in the west to Vidisha in the east. The Paramara power rose and declined several times as a result of their struggles with the Chalukyas of Gujarat, the Chalukyas of Kalyani, the Kalachuris of Tripuri and other neighbouring kingdoms. The later Paramara rulers moved their capital to Mandapa Durga now Mandu, after Dara was sacked multiple times by their enemies. Mahalakadeva, the last known Paramara king, was defeated and killed by the forces of Aladdin Khalji of Delhi in 1305 CE, although epigraphic evidence suggests that the Paramara rule continued for a few years after his death. Malwa enjoyed a great level of political and cultural prestige under the Paramaras. The Paramaras were well known for their patronage to Sanskrit poets and scholars, and Boja was himself a renowned scholar. Most of the Paramara kings were Shaivites and commissioned several Shiva temples, although they also patronized Jain scholars. Origin Ancestry The Harsola copper plates 949 CE issued by the Paramara king Siyaka II established that the early Paramara rulers were the feudatories of the Rashtrakutas of Manyaheta. This inscription mentions a king called Akalavarsha identified with the Rashtrakuta ruler Krishna III, followed by the expression Tasman Kul, in that family, and then followed by the name, Vaparaha, identified with the Paramara king Vakpati I. Based on the Harsala inscription, some historians such as D. C. Ganguly theorized that the Paramaras were descended from the Rashtrakutas. Ganguly also tried to find support for his theory in Ain I Akbari, whose variation of the Agnikula myth see below states that the founder of the Paramara kingdom came to Malwa from Deccan, and that Aditya Panwar was the first sovereign ruler of the dynasty. Moreover, Siyaka's successor Munja II assumed titles such as Amogavarsha, Sri Vallabha, and Prithvi Vallabha. These are distinctively Rashtrakuta titles. Several historians have been critical of this theory. Dasharatha Sharma notes that the Agnikula myth about the Paramara origin had come into being by the time of Siyaka's son Sindoraha. Sharma argues that the Rashtrakuta royal origin of the Paramaras could not have been forgotten within a generation. K. C. Jain theorizes that Vaparaja's mother was related to the Rashtrakuta family, because the other Paramara records do not boast of the Rashtrakuta royals as their ancestors. Siyaka and other Paramara kings before Munja did not adopt any Rashtrakuta titles. Munja may have adopted these titles to commemorate his predecessor's victory over the Rashtrakutas, and to strengthen his claim over the former Rashtrakuta territories. The later Paramara kings claimed to be members of the Agnikula or Agnavansha. Fire clan. The Agnikula myth of origin, which appears in several of their inscriptions and literary works, goes like this. The sage Vishvamitra forcibly took a wish granting cow from another sage Vashistha on the Arbuta mountain. Mount Abu. Vashistha then conjured a hero from a sacrificial fire pit, Agnikunda, who defeated Vashistha's enemies and brought back the cow. Vashistha then gave the hero the title Paramara. Enemy killer. The earliest known source to mention this story is the Nava Sahasanka Karita of Padmagupta Paramala, who was a court poet of the Paramara king Sindoraha ca. The legend is not mentioned in earlier Paramara-era inscriptions or literary works. By this time, all the neighboring dynasties claimed divine or heroic origin, which might have motivated the Paramaras to invent a legend of their own. In the later period, the Paramaras were categorized as one of the Rajput clans, although the Rajput identity did not exist during their time. 
A legend mentioned in a recension of Prithviraj Raso extended their Agnikula legend to describe other dynasties as fire-born Rajputs. The earliest extant copies of Prithviraj Raso do not contain this legend. This version might have been invented by the 16th century poets who wanted to foster Rajput unity against the Mughal emperor Akbar. Some colonial era historians interpreted this mythical account to suggest a foreign origin for the Paramaras. According to this theory, the ancestors of the Paramaras and other Agnivanshi Rajputs came to India after the decline of the Gupta Empire around the 5th century CE. They were admitted in the Hindu caste system after performing a fire ritual. However, this theory is weakened by the fact that the legend is not mentioned in the earliest of the Paramara records, and even the earliest Paramara era account does not mention the other dynasties as Agnivanshi. Some historians, such as Dasharatha Sharma and Pratipal Bhatia, have argued that the Paramaras were originally Brahmins from the Vashistha Gotra. This theory is based on the fact that Halayuda, who was patronized by Munja, describes the king as Brahma Kshtra in Pingala Sutra Vriti. According to Bhatia, this expression means that Munja came from a family of Brahmins who became Kshatriyas. In addition, the Patanarayana temple inscription states that the Paramaras were a Vashistha Gotra, which is a Gotra among Brahmins claiming descent from the sage Vashistha. D. C. Sarkar theorized that the dynasty descended from the Malavas. However, there is no evidence of the early Paramara rulers being called Malava. The Paramaras began to be called Malavas only after they began ruling the Malwa region. Topic. Original homeland Based on the Agnikula legend, some scholars such as C. V. Vaidya and V. A. Smith speculated that Mount Abu was the original home of the Paramaras. Based on the Harsola copper plates and Ain I Akbari, D. C. Ganguly believed they came from the Deccan region. The earliest of the Paramara inscriptions that of Siyaka II have all been discovered in Gujarat, and concern land grants in that region. Based on this, D. B. Diskalkar and H. V. Trivedi theorized that the Paramaras were associated with Gujarat during their early days. <laughs> early rulers Historical evidence suggests that between 808–812 CE, the Rashtrakutas of Manyaheta expelled the Gurhara Pratiharas from the Malwa region. The Rashtrakuta king Govinda III placed Malwa under the protection of Karka Raja, the Rashtrakuta chief of Lata, a region bordering Malwa, in present-day Gujarat. Malwa was subsequently ruled by a vassal of the Rashtrakutas. This vassal could have been a member of the Paramara dynasty, but there is no definitive proof of this. The start of the Paramara rule in Malwa cannot be dated with certainty, but it is incontestable that they did not rule the Malwa before the 9th century CE. Siyaka is the earliest known Paramara king attested by his own inscriptions. His Harsola copper plate inscription 949 CE is the earliest available Paramara inscription. It suggests that he was a vassal of the Rashtrakutas. The list of his predecessors varies between accounts. Paramara is the dynasty's mythical progenitor, according to the Agnikula legend. Whether the other early kings mentioned in the Udaipur Prashasti are historical or fictional is a topic of debate among historians. According to C. V. Vaidya and K. A. Nilakantha Sastri, the Paramara dynasty was founded only in the 10th century CE. Vaidya believes that the kings such as Virasimha I and Siyaka I are imaginary, duplicated from the names of later historical kings in order to push back the dynasty's age. The 1274 CE Mandhata copper plate inscription of Jayavarman II similarly names eight successors of Paramara as Kamandaludara, Dumraha, Devasimapala, Kanakasimha, Sriharsha, Jagadeva, Stirakaya, and Voshari. These do not appear to be historical figures. H. V. Trivedi states that there is a possibility that Virasimha I and Siyaka I of the Udaipur Prashasti are same as Virasimha II and Siyaka II. The names might have been repeated by mistake. Alternatively, he theorizes that these names have been omitted in other inscriptions because these rulers were not independent sovereigns. Several other historians believe that the early Paramara rulers mentioned in the Udaipur Prashasti are not fictional, and the Paramaras started ruling Malwa in the 9th century as Rashtrakuta vassals. K. N. Seth argues that even some of the later Paramara inscriptions mention only three to four predecessors of the king who issued the inscription. 
Therefore, the absence of certain names from the genealogy provided in the early inscriptions does not mean that these were imaginary rulers. According to him, the mention of Apendra in Nava Sahasanka Charitra composed by the court poet of the later king Sindoraha proves that Apendra is not a fictional king. Historians such as Georg Buhler and James Burgess identify Apendra and Krishnaraja as one person, because these are synonyms Apendra being another name of Krishna. However, an inscription of Siyaka's successor Munja names the preceding kings as Krishnaraja, Virasimha, and Siyaka. Based on this, Seth however identifies Krishnaraja with Vaparaha or Vakpati I mentioned in the Harsala plates Vaparaha appears to be the Prakrit form of Vakpati Raja. In his support, Seth points out that Virasimha has been called Krishna Padanudyata in the inscription of Munja i.e. Vakpati II. He theorizes that Vakpati II used the name Krishnaraja instead of Vakpati I to identify his ancestor, in order to avoid confusion with his own name. The imperial paramaras The first independent sovereign of the Paramara dynasty was Siyaka sometimes called Siyaka II to distinguish him from the earlier Siyaka mentioned in the Udaipur Prashasti. The Harsola copper plates 949 CE suggest that Siyaka was a feudatory of the Rashtrakuta ruler Krishna III in his early days. However, the same inscription also mentions the high-sounding Maharajadirajapati as one of Siyaka's titles. Based on this, K. N. Seth believes that Siyaka's acceptance of the Rashtrakuta lordship was nominal. As a Rashtrakuta feudatory, Siyaka participated in their campaigns against the Pratiharas. He also defeated some Huna chiefs ruling to the north of Malwa. He might have suffered setbacks against the Chandela king Yashovarman. After the death of Krishna III, Siyaka defeated his successor Kodaga in a battle fought on the banks of the Narmada River. He then pursued Kodaga's retreating army to the Rashtrakuta capital Manyaheta, and sacked that city in 972 CE. His victory ultimately led to the decline of the Rashtrakutas, and the establishment of the Paramaras as an independent sovereign power in Malwa. Siyaka's successor Munja achieved military successes against the Chahamanas of Shakambari, the Chahamanas of Natala, the Gahilas of Mewar, the Hunas, the Kalachuris of Tripuri, and the ruler of Gurhara region, possibly a Gujarat Chalakya or Pratihara ruler. He also achieved some early successes against the western Chalukya king Tailapa II, but was ultimately defeated and killed by Tailapa some time between 994 CE and 998 CE. As a result of this defeat, the Paramaras lost their southern territories, possibly the ones beyond the Narmada River, to the Chalukyas. Munja was reputed as a patron of scholars, and his rule attracted scholars from different parts of India to Malwa. He was also a poet himself, although only a few stanzas composed by him now survive. Munja's brother Sindoraha ruled c. 990s CE, defeated the western Chalukya king Satishraya, and recovered the territories lost to Tailapa II. He also achieved military successes against Ahuna chief, the Somavanshi of South Kosala, the Shilaharas of Konkana, and the ruler of Lada. Southern Gujarat. His court poet Padmagupta wrote his biography Nava Sahasanka Karita, which credits him with several other victories, although these appear to be poetic exaggerations. Sindoraja's son Boja is the most celebrated ruler of the Paramara dynasty. He made several attempts to expand the Paramara kingdom, varying results. Around 1018 CE, he defeated the Chalukyas of Lata in present day Gujarat. Between 1018 CE and 1020 CE, he gained control of the northern Konkan, whose Shilahara rulers probably served as his feudatories for a brief period. Boja also formed an alliance against the Kalyani Chalukya king Jayasimha II, with Rajendra Chola and Gangaya Deva Kalachari. The extent of Boja's success in this campaign is not certain, as both Chalukya and Paramara panegyrics claimed victory. During the last years of Boja's reign, sometime after 1042 CE, Jayasimha's son and successor Someshvara I invaded Malwa, and sacked his capital Dara. Boja re-established his control over Malwa soon after the departure of the Chalukya army, but the defeat pushed back the southern boundary of his kingdom from Godavari to Narmada. Boja's attempt to expand his kingdom eastwards was foiled by the Chandela king Vidyadhara. However, Boja was able to extend his influence among the Chandela feudatories, the Kachchapagadas of Dubkin. Boja also launched a campaign against the Kachchapagadas of Gwalior, possibly with the ultimate goal of capturing Kanauj, but his attacks were repulsed by their ruler Kirtiraja. 
Boja also defeated the Chahamanas of Shakambari, killing their ruler Virirama. However, he was forced to retreat by the Chahamanas of Natala. According to medieval Muslim historians, after sacking Somnath, Mahmud of Ghazni changed his route to avoid confrontation with a Hindu king named Param Dev. Modern historians identify Param Dev as Boja. The name may be a corruption of Paramara Deva or of Boja's title Parameshvara Paramabhadaraka. Boja may have also contributed troops to support the Kabul Shahi ruler Anandapala's fight against the Ghaznavids. He may have also been a part of the Hindu alliance that expelled Mahmud's governors from Hansi, Thanissar and other areas around 1043 CE. During the last year of Boja's reign, or shortly after his death, the Chalukya king Bhima I and the Kalachari king Karna attacked his kingdom. According to the 14th century author Maratunga, Boja died of a disease at the same time the Allied army attacked his kingdom. At its zenith, Boja's kingdom extended from Chittor in the north to Upper Konkan in the south, and from the Sabarmati River in the west to Vidisha in the east. He was recognized as a capable military leader, but his territorial conquests were short lived. His major claim to fame was his reputation as a scholar king, who patronized arts, literature, and sciences. Noted poets and writers of his time sought his sponsorship. Boja was himself a polymath, whose writings cover a wide variety of topics include grammar, poetry, architecture, yoga, and chemistry. Boja established the Bhoj Shala which was a center for Sanskrit studies and a temple of Sarasvati in present-day Dar. He is said to have founded the city of Bhojpur, a belief supported by historical evidence. Besides the Bojeshwar temple there, the construction of three now breached dams in that area is attributed to him. Because of his patronage to literary figures, several legends written after his death featured him as a righteous scholar king. In terms of the number of legends centered around him, Boja is comparable to the fabled Vikramaditya. <laughs> Decline Boja's successor Jayasimha I, who was probably his son, faced the joint Kalachari Chalakya invasion immediately after Boja's death. Bilhana's writings suggest that he sought help from the Chalukyas of Kalyani. Jayasimha's successor and Boja's brother Udayaditya was defeated by Chamundaraja, his vassal at Vagata. He repulsed an invasion by the Chalukya ruler Karna, with help from his allies. Udayaditya's eldest son Lakshmadeva has been credited with extensive military conquests in the Nagpur Prashasti inscription of 1104 -2. However, these appear to be poetic exaggerations. At best, he might have defeated the Kalachuris of Tripuri. Udayaditya's younger son Naravarman faced several defeats, losing to the Chandelas of Jijakabukti and the Chalakya king Jayasimha Siddharaha. By the end of his reign, one Vijayapala had carved out an independent kingdom to the northeast of Ujjain. Yashovarman lost control of the Paramara capital Dara to Jayasimha Siddharaha. His successor Jayavarman I regained control of Dara, but soon lost it to an usurper named Balala. The Chalakya king Kumarapala defeated Balala around 1150 CE, supported by his feudatories the Natala Shahamana ruler Alhana and the Abu Paramara chief Yashodavala. Malwa then became a province of the Chalukyas. A minor branch of the Paramaras, who styled themselves as Mahakamaras, ruled the area around Bhopal during this time. Nearly two decades later, Jayavarman's son Vindyavarman defeated the Chalukya king Malaraja II, and re-established the Paramara sovereignty in Malwa. During his reign, Malwa faced repeated invasions from the Hoysalas and the Yadavas of Devagiri. He was also defeated by the Chalukya general Kumara. Despite these setbacks, he was able to restore the Paramara power in Malwa before his death. Vindyavarman's son Subhadavarman invaded Gujarat and plundered the Chalukya territories. But he was ultimately forced to retreat by the Chalukya feudatory Lavana Prasada. His son Arjunavarman I also invaded Gujarat and defeated Jayanta Simha, or Jaya Simha who had usurped the Chalukya throne for a brief period. He was defeated by Yadava general Kolshavara in Lata. Arjunavarman was succeeded by Devapala, who was the son of Harish Chandra, a Mahakamara chief of a Paramara branch. He continued to face struggles against the Chalukyas and the Yadavas. The Sultan of Delhi Iltutmish captured Bilsa during 1233-34 CE, but Devapala defeated the Sultanate's governor and regained control of Bilsa. 
According to the Hamira Mahakavya, he was killed by Vagabada of Ranthambur, who suspected him of plotting his murder in connivance with the Delhi Sultan. During the reign of Devapala's son Jaitujadeva, the power of the Paramaras greatly declined because of invasions from the Yadava king Krishna, the Delhi Sultan Balban, and the Vajela prince Visala Deva. Devapala's younger son Jayavarman II also faced attacks from these three powers. Either Jaitugdi or Jayavarman II moved the Paramara capital from Dara to the hilly Mandapa Durga, present-day Mandu, which offered a better defensive position. Arjunavarman II, the successor of Jayavarman II, proved to be a weak ruler. He faced rebellion from his minister. In the 1270s, the Yadava ruler Ramachandra invaded Malwa, and in the 1280s, the Ranthambur Shahamana ruler Hamira also raided Malwa. Arjuna's successor Boja II also faced an invasion from Hamira. Boja II was either a titular ruler controlled by his minister, or his minister had usurped a part of the Paramara kingdom. Mahalakadeva, the last known Paramara king, was defeated and killed by the army of Aladdin Kalji in 1305 CE. Rulers The Paramara rulers mentioned in the various inscriptions and literary sources are as follows. The rulers are sons of their predecessors, unless otherwise specified. Paramara, mythical ancestor mentioned in the Agnikula legend Apendra, 9th century Virasimha, I, 9th century, considered fictional by some historians Siyaka I, 9th century, considered fictional by some historians Vakpati I, 9th-10th century, called Vaparaha or Bapiraja in Harsola copper plates Virasimha II, 10th century Siyaka II, alias Harsha, 948–972 Vakpati II, alias Munja, 972–990s, Siyaka's elder son Sindoraha, 990s minus 1010, Siyaka's younger son, Boja, 1010 to 1055, Jayasimha, I, 1055 to 1070, Udayaditya, 1070 to 1086, Boja's brother, Lakshma Deva, 1086 to 1094, Udayaditya's elder son, Naravarman, 1094 to 1130, Udayaditya's younger son. Yashovarman, 1133-1142 Jayavarman I, 1142-1143 Interregnum, 1144-1174, an usurper named Balala captured power in Malwa. He was defeated by the Chalakyas of Gujarat. The Paramara kingdom remained under Chalakya suzerainty during this period. Vindiavarman, 1175-1194 Subhadavarman, 1194–1209 Arjunavarman I, 1210–1215 Devapala, 1218–1239, son of Mahakamara Harishchandra Jaitujadeva, 1239–1255, Devapala's elder son Jayavarman II, 1255–1274, Devapala's younger son Arjunavarman II, 13th century Boja II, 13th century Malakadeva, died 1305 An inscription from Udaipur indicates that the Paramara dynasty survived until 1310, at least in the northeastern part of Malwa. A later inscription shows that the area had been captured by the Delhi Sultanate by 1338. Branches and claimed descendants Besides the Paramara sovereigns of Malwa, several branches of the dynasties ruled as feudatories at various places. These include Paramaras of Binmal also known as the Paramaras of Kiradu Branched off from the Paramaras of Chandravati Paramaras of Chandravati also known as Paramaras of Abu Became feudatories of the Chalakyas of Gujarat by the 12th century Paramaras of Vagada Ruled at Arthuna as feudatories of the Paramaras of Malwa Paramaras of Jailer Supplanted by the Chahamanas of Jalarth rulers of several princely states claimed connection with the Paramaras. These include Bogal State, it is said to have been founded by Ajab Dev Parmar, who came to present-day Himachal Pradesh from Ujjain in the 14th century. 
Danda state, its rulers claimed membership of the Parmar clan and descent from the legendary King Vikramaditya of Ujjain. Diwas state, senior and junior, the Maratha Puar rulers of these states claimed descent from the Paramara dynasty. Dar state, its founder Anand Rao Puar, who claimed Paramara descent, received a fee from Peshwa Baji Rao I in the 18th century. Gangpur state, its rulers claimed Paramara ancestry. According to David Hennage, this claim is doubtful. Muli state, its rulers claimed Paramara descent, and are said to have started out as feudatories of the Vigelas. Narsingar state Jagdishpur and Dumrayan, the Rajputs of Bhojpur district in present-day Bihar, who styled themselves as Ujjainia Panwar Rajputs, started claiming descent from the royal family of Ujjain in the 17th century. The Rajas of Jagdishpur and Dumrayan in Bihar claimed descent from the Ujjainia branch of Paramaras. The Gandawariya Rajputs of Mathila and the Ujjainias of Bhojpur also claim descent from the Paramara dynasty. Bijolia, located in present-day Rajasthan. It is the head house of Rajput Parmars. It was taken over by Rao Ashok Parmar of Jagnar present-day Uttar Pradesh from the Hatta and Chohan rulers of Bundi state. During the 13 to 14th century Afghan invasion on Dar state, main ruling took refuge here and settled here. Topic: See also List of Rajput dynasties and states List of rulers of Malwa